Hi, so in this video today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the philosophy of playing uh, in time, which is an important thing for a drummer to contemplate because we're the main one in a band challenged with keeping the time. Everyone should be counting and keeping their own time, but you know they're probably not. And even if they are, they could use some reinforcement from a good solid drummer. So when you're keeping time as a drummer, uh, there's sort of a myth, it's not exactly a myth, but it's kind of a myth, that you can sort of play ahead of the beat, on the beat, or behind the beat. And it, you know, largely you do have to play on the beat. And of course, right now, a ton of drummers are sort of rolling their eyes and clicking away from the video because they're thinking, of course you can play behind the beat. That's how you groove the hardest, is playing a little behind the beat or whatever. And that has to be taken with a grain of salt. There's a caveat there that if you miss the downbeat and you're late on it, you are never correct. That is not playing behind the beat, that is being behind in general. However, little notes like E and uh, or the two notes that aren't the downbeat of a triplet, um, can be played with in time. Uh, or if you're swinging, the second half of the shuffle, um, the one that doesn't land on the downbeat, that can sort of be played with in time. And so you can feel a little behind or a little ahead. Um, you can drive that or lay that back. So that is a true thing. Um, and it, beats sound really cool when you play with those sort of syncopated intermediate notes. But you can't really play with the downbeats because then the song just slows down and you or you sound really behind. Um, so when you are a drummer and you are tasked with these things, um, you must first make sure that you are playing really correctly in straight time before you start trying to mess with your feel. Um, and a lot of drummers sort of skip this step and then they just don't have good time. Um, there's a misconception out there also that playing with a metronome can somehow actually hinder your time. And to some extent, if you are dependent on a metronome 100% of the time for subdividing out 16th notes in every beat you play, then you probably won't have good independent time. But using a metronome in the proper way doesn't necessarily uh, make you have worse time. And in fact, it can greatly enhance your sense of time, um, which is sort of what it was designed for. So um, the great thing about keeping straight time is that uh, that study that everyone liked to uh, quote on Facebook and Twitter and stuff a few you know weeks or months ago um, was from the uh, Swedish Karolinska Institute. Um, where they said that drummers are smarter than everyone else because we're able to keep a beat. And this shows us that, you know, we have great problem solving skills uh, that, say, people who can't keep a beat don't have. Um, so if you want to claim that you're smart because you're a drummer based on Swedish medical studies, then you also have to be able to keep a straight beat. How do you know if you have a good time? Well, there's a couple ways you can tell. Um, you can just play with a metronome. You can buy practice pads that have sort of a uh, metronome, you know, sync built into them and it will tell you how far off from the beat you are. Or you can just get an app or go to a website. There's a couple of games. One app for the Apple platform is called Neurotiming. And then there's a game on concerthotels.com that's just called Got Rhythm. You can Google these things pretty easily. And they will tell you sort of how many milliseconds off from perfect you are. Now there's another study out there that shows that people don't like the sound of drum machines compared to real drummers, specifically because the real drummers aren't 100% accurate. And so that's a real thing. You have to weigh the difference between playing 100% accurately, which is technically impossible, no one can do that, um, versus trying to play sort of behind the beat. Where do you fall in that spectrum? Well, it also depends on what kind of music you're playing. So if you are going to mess with those uh, intermediate notes that aren't downbeats and sort of give the impression that you're playing behind the beat, then you have to be playing a style of music that is suited for it. Maybe some kinds of laid back funk, uh, R&B, blues, these types of music calls for that. If you are playing rock or metal, uh, modern rock, or uh, some kind of more uh, pop tune that has, say, backing tracks that you have to play along with, you actually really need to be right dead center on the beat most of the time, or you're just going to sound off. Um, especially the more busy the music is, the more right on the beat you need to be. So that's a really valuable skill as a drummer. If you use the metronome at all, uh, you're always going to be better off than if you don't, even if you're trying to sort of lay back on the beat. And the way that you do that, one quick 
tip for that is instead of putting the metronome on sixteenths or eighths or even quarters, you can put the metronome on halves or holes. And as long as you're lining up with the major downbeats, then you can sort of play with the time in between. And that actually really enhances your own mental sense of timing rather than subdividing, which makes you more accurate, but in some cases can take the responsibility away from you as a drummer. So there's a few different sides to this issue. Let me know if you have any questions on it, if you totally disagree. Um, but those are just some thoughts on time that I had.